Atlanta, Georgia, where this afternoon Michigan at 24 and 7, 12 and 6 in the Big Ten. That was good enough for third. Takes on Xavier at 21 and 11. They finished third in their conference. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for this afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Omni for this first round NCAA Southeastern Regional game between the Musketeers of Xavier and the Wolverines of Michigan. Here are the starting lineups at forward for Xavier, number 30, Colin Parker. At forward for Michigan, number 41, Glenn Rice. At forward for Xavier, number 42, Tyrone Hill. At forward for Michigan, number 52, Terry Mills. At center for Xavier, number 33, Derek Strong. At center for Michigan, number 35, Loy Vaught. At guard for Xavier, number 11, Stan, Stan Kimbrough. At guard for Michigan, number 20, Mike Griffin. At guard for Xavier, number 20, Michael Davenport. At guard for Michigan, number 21, Rumiel Robinson. The head coach of Xavier is Pete Gillen. And the head coach of Michigan is Steve Fisher. It'll be Michigan against Xavier this afternoon in Atlanta. We'll return with the opening tip-off after these messages. The scene is the Omni. The winners out of here go on to Lexington to play in the Southeast region. That'll happen next week. This is Ralph Packer along with Dan Belwombe. Xavier against Michigan. It could be the luck of the Irish if Pete Gillen wins. He's totally Irish, redheaded, and has everything that goes with it. And, and spent a few years at Notre Dame, so he's got everything going for him, and I'm sure Pete's got his team ready to go. But i got to tell you right now, Ralph, they're going to have to play a superb game if they're going to beat this club. And they open up right, getting the tip off. To start it, and a foul is going to be on Michigan. Right off the bat, the first foul of the ball game. Michigan draws it as Mike Rippin does it. And Xavier will have a chance to go on top. Griffin trying to get a little position that time. And good start for Xavier. I think they're going to have to play well in the first four or five minutes if they want to stay in this game. Michael Davenport, who at 70.3, goes up for the free throw line. He's a 6'4 senior out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. I asked the question yesterday whether or not he had been recruited by Michigan, and they said absolutely not. Well, maybe that's a little more incentive to play well. I don't know. <laughs> Davenport, as you said, pretty good free throw shooter. He's hoping for a fast start. And it's 1-0 as Davenport Xavier out on top. Defensively, what will Xavier have to do? Well, they're trying to pressure, but they're trying to keep the ball out of that guy's hands right there, Ramiel Robinson. We might get a charge going the other way. Looked like Norm Baruki made the call underneath. Ramiel Robinson on a dead run. Good position by Xavier. Watch the defensive transition and the position. Good anticipation. And a good, a good play defensively by Davenport. Mike Griffin, Ramel Robinson, each with one foul. Two fouls on Michigan. And it's 1-0. Xavier out on top. Defensively, what can Michigan do? Michigan straight man to man. Going to try to also exhibit a little bit of pressure. Hope that Xavier doesn't shoot it well on the outside. Good patience and ball control by Xavier. Pretty good open shot right there. Rebound belongs to nobody yet. Finally, Michigan comes up with Michigan's Loy Vaughn. What a haul he is under these teams. Griffith, Ramil Robinson. Rice, the second leading scorer of all time, but Michigan gets their first two, and the Wolverines are on top by one. Good pass decision that time by Ramil Robinson as Michigan takes an early lead, but that's what they're going to have to do, Ralph. 
They want to post it up, bring Reveal with the ball over to Rice. A good job that time by the Wolverines in the half court. Parker. Golden Parker. This is Hill. Oh, pretty good shooter. Tyrone Ooh. Hill. Second leading rebounder in America. Averaging 12 and a half rebounds a game. Gets that one. Rice. He'll shoot it from everywhere. He gets three. He has no ambition about buying that ball up. Davenport. Tell you what, you better play Rice a little tighter than that. You've got to play him tight right. There's a good pass inside, and it looks like the reach around might have been on, might have been on Vaught. Lloyd Vaught draws his first. It, there's a problem for Xavier. Good post up and spot up by Rice. And the one thing I like what he does, he keeps the ball up high and turns it right in. He's got double problems there. He can shoot it on the outside and he can score inside. It's tough to handle. Three fouls already against the Wolverine. Davin for him with it against Griffin. Michigan wants to play the man-to-man. -man. Davenport. That's two. Davenport has his third point. Now, Davenport's on a little bit of a roll. He's been playing well of late. Good three-point shooter. It's tied five. The only tie we have had. We're just underway from here to Lava. Robinson. Good, strong young man. The first foul is in against Xavier. It's on Tyrone Hill. And, Ralph, that's the one man they can ill afford to lose. And right there, you saw Robinson penetrating. Kimbrell let him have the baseline. you got to keep him away. But what a smart play by Ramil to get it up in traffic and draw the foul on Hill. Hill wanted the block, didn't like the call. And he's a guy that can't get his third foul in the first half. Ramil Robinson at the free throw line. Jamal Walker comes in the game number 10 for Xavier. Of course, he was a part-time starter for him. And he's been a key guy coming off the bench. He's been a person that's come in to score some points. Jamel Robinson had a string of 36 consecutive games as a starting position broken this year against Utah. Michigan back out on top. They have trailed by one on two different occasions. Hill. Hill right in the face of Vaught gets him as Hill's taking the battle to him. He has four points so far. Game's tied at 7-0. Oh, good job that time by Xavier to try to look at the way they're trying to keep it away from Robinson's hands. There's a good steal, good double team for someone else to bring it up. Rice for two. He's hit three in a row. Oh, can he shoot it? Glenn Rice, come on. He hits 57.8%. That's not bad. 57.8%. <laughs> He shoots a lot of them from out long range. You almost take it for granted when he's got the ball and it's going down. Good pass inside. Look at that triple team. The steal is Vaught comes up with it. Rice is doing it all. He also turned it over. Walker gets it back. Walker and Strong. Knocked away. It's going to go to Xavier. Derek Strong is out of Los Angeles. A 6'10 junior trying to handle the ball. There's Pete Gillen. Four years. They rumor that he may be in line for this Michigan job. Dan. Well, he's done a great job at Xavier, and I'm sure that you know Xavier would love to keep him there. But he's been a very hot coach. And they got to take a good look at him. One ninety-one ball games, only lost thirty-three in four years. I think. Not bad. Xavier's three out of four from the field. As Kimbrough pumps for three. Strong. Go up with it. He walks. Oh, three seconds. They call three seconds on Out of bounds. Michigan gets it. It's a little it. surprising, Ralph, to me, that Xavier's been able to rebound the ball inside. Michigan has not dominated the defensive board. Xavier's had some second and third efforts, and they've got a big club with Strong and Hill. Here comes Hughes in the game. Maybe they're going to bring Hughes in the game for a little more rebounding. And Steve Fisher may be concerned about that. He should be early. Vaughn is the man who goes out. 16.59 to go, first half of play. It's 9-7, Michigan leads over Xavier. Ramil Robinson, they try to catch him in the trap. Rice, he finally missed one. Hughes got it. Good Hughes job. just checking in. Good job by Hughes. A nice little jump hook inside. But don't forget, the game plan of Xavier is to force Ramil Robinson to release the ball. Get it away from his hands and let the other guys try to create. Walker, Kimbrough. Kimbrough says move it as he goes against the bigger Griffin. This is Davenport against Rice. Davenport has five points. He averages only six points a ball game. A good job by Kimbrough. Whoa! Kimbrough. A solo. Oh, look at that. Kimbrough gets his first two. Now the game is tied at 11 all. 
I really think Xavier's underseated. This club is not bad. There's Rice. He walked with it. And for Michigan, that will be their fourth turnover. What a steal by Kimbrough in the, in the midcourt with the deflection. He didn't get it the first time. He gets it the second time and brings it all the way in for an easy finish. And that's what they're going to have to do. Get those midcourt transition steals, and Michigan might have some problems. Steve Fisher's got to be thinking, we need to control the ball a lot better than that. This is his debut. What a way to break in. Huh? Uh, CAA uh, tournament. Look at that shooting. Woo. Five of seven, four of six. Dave Miners in the ball game for Xavier. He's a transfer from Indiana. Where's number 31? And the foul's going to be on Tyrone Hill for pushing off. That'll be two on him. Well, that's a decision time for Pete Gillen right now. Tyrone Hill picks up his second foul on a push, and that's not what you need. Tyrone Hill needs to stay in this game. There's absolutely no doubt the fact that Xavier does not have a deep bench. I think Pete's going to get him out of it. Now, if you're Michigan right now, Ralph, you've got to look to see who Hill is guarding. If they can back the ball out, take a look at who he's guarding, which is Hughes, and try to give him the ball. Big guy. Out of bounds, Xavier's going to get it done. Did they allow... Now they allow Xavier to make the substitution to get Hill out. They wasted one time down the floor, and so they're going to bring in... They're going to bring in Strong. Strong, of course, the starter. Started in the middle. It's 11-11. Xavier and Michigan tied up. We have 15-20 to go. First half of play. Kimbrough against Griffin again. Davenport. Strong knocked away. Two on one. Robinson from Mill Robinson, Michigan. Oh, what a tip. The tap in by Terry Mills. What a play by Terry Mills. That time over the back, reached over to get it back up and in. Highly recruited player out of Romulus, Michigan. Two-point ball game. Xavier on the short end. Of course, Mills, when he came out of high school, he and J.R. Reed were the two best players, and a lot of people feel disappointed that Mills really hasn't lived up to maybe some of their expectations. But I'll tell you, he's a pretty good player. I mean, he can, he can rebound inside, and he's done a pretty good job for him. Strong against all opposition gets it. Strong gets his first two. That's six out of ten for Xavier. They pull down three rebounds, only being out rebounded by one of this bigger Michigan ball club. Look at them get off. Are they off inside? Rice. Good defense. Good job by Xavier to kind of clog it up in there. Now they need to back it out if they don't have it. Xavier. Nice pass. Strong inside. Woo. Strong's got two in a row. Give him four points for the game. And make it a 15-13 game. Xavier with their biggest lead of the afternoon on the board. Robinson. Strong on the rebound. Minor. Minor, they say that his biggest contribution to this team is his knowledge of the game. What a point lead. Well, what a transition that time by Xavier. They're taking a page out of Michigan's book, beating him down the floor. I think they're shocking him a little bit. Now I think it's decision time for the coaches, the players. They know they're in a ball game. They're going to have to hang tough. There's a nice pass high to low. Good entry pass to Mills. Who took it in and was fouled. And the foul's got to be on Jamal Walker. This first. I think it would have to be a very difficult situation to be thrust upon you. What happened to Steve Fisher at this point, even though he has been the man who has had Bill Frieder's ear for a long time. It's a lot different when you're making the suggestion and the suggestion you're having to make being yours. That's right. There's a big decision. We said that in the open. There's the entry pass inside the Mills, and he brought the ball down a little bit. But good pass from Glenn Rice, high to low. And Terry Mills will go to the free throw line as Sean Higgins, number 24, comes in the game for Michigan. Of course, Sean, a tremendous talent at about 6, 8, or 9, can play that second guard, play small forward. So Michigan doesn't drop down a lot when he comes in. It's a big club they have out there on the floor right now. You indeed. And Mills, 6'10 himself. 79% from the free throw line has started every game this year for Michigan. He now has four points. 13 minutes, 19 seconds to go. It's 17-14. Xavier is leading the Big Ten Michigan Wolverine. There's time out of the court. Being neutral. 17-15. 
Xavier leads over Michigan. Michigan has only lost once in the first round of the NCAA or NIT tournaments. That was in 1975 when a John Wooten coach team, his last, would beat them 103 to 91 in overtime in the first round. And Coach Wooten would go on to win the NCAA championship, the last UCLA won in his last ever ball game as a coach. There is Coach Steve Fisher. On take, the sideline. Going to take Terry Mills out of the game and maybe chat with him a little bit. And Tyrone Hill comes back for Xavier. I think Michigan really has to try to get that third foul on Hill. There's an outside jump. Whoa, another outside jump. It is 2015 here in Atlanta. 12.53 to go. First half. Rice hits his second three-pointer of the afternoon. Right after Jamal Walker hit one for Xavier. It's 2018. Xavier leads. Rice has really kept Michigan in the game. He has 10 points. Got 10 of the 18. And he's made some bombs. I really think Xavier's done a nice job, though. He's got him a quick four shot. And that's not the kind of shot I think they need to take. They need to run their motion and get it inside. That one a little too fast. Jamal Robinson to Rice. Rice has had a big day. Hughes has just put it back up and in. His second follow-up of the afternoon, his fourth point. We welcome you to Atlanta, Georgia. This is Ralph Acker, along with a host of folks here for the NCAA. First round. Hill with it. Hill puts it back in. Dan, he has been on the bench. He's just come back to get his sixth point. Tyrone Hill, the key player. Of course, Hill's got two fouls. There's a turnover. I think he turned it over or stepped on the end of the sideline. And a fifth turnover. Of course, the Michigan. game plan, Ralph, for Xavier was to bother Ramil Robinson, force him to give up the ball. Let's let the other guys try to create. And Steve Fisher here, of course, who has taken over for Bill Frieder, who's going to be at Arizona State, knew he was going to be in a tough game, and he has. And I really think Xavier and Pete Dillon's club's done a nice job. This is an underseeded team. This is a much better team than a 14th seed in a region. Look at Most that. of the afternoon, the lead has been to Xavier as Davenport goes under, gets his seventh point, already better than his average. Could it be an upset brewing here in Atlanta this afternoon? Still a long way to go in this one. Trying to post it up inside. They're looking for Vaught. Vaught's really been out of this game. A guy that shot about 50, almost 60 percent for the year. There's an outside jumper. Oh, my goodness. Look at that one. Robinson. He gets his fourth point on a three-point shot. Michigan is three out of four for three-point land. Xavier is one out of two. Jamal Walker. Walker missed six ball games early in the year when he had a hernia operation. And Xavier's barely finished above 500 with him out. Michigan on the steal. For Xavier, that happens to be their fourth penalty. Good pass. Very nice pass in the open court. Ramil Robinson with the penetration. Gives it up to Lloyd Vaught for the easy score. Boy, Robinson's really a key factor. That one was blocked and in. I want to tell you. And it counts. I mean, he got a piece of that ball. Jamal Walker gets number five. I thought he had it caught on his hip, but he just got away with it. <laughs> Jamal Walker got that ball up. And it was partially deflected. And the ball went in. Here comes Walker. Now, this ball is going to be partially deflected on the way up. Looks like Vaught. There it is. It was hit, and it went in. He likes it. And Ramel Robinson draws his second foul. It's 26-25. Xavier's out on front. That's six for Jamal Walker. 27-25. Now here's the backcourt pressure. Trying to force Sean Higgins out. Got to, got to keep it out of his hands. See, he's going he's to create some problems. You almost got to face guard him and don't let him get the ball. Of course, easier said than done. Said, Coach, you go out and face guard. I'm not face guard. Xavier's hit six of the last shots from the outside. Game is tied at 27 all. Michigan's hit their last four shots to come from behind to tie the ball game. Minor. Well, he got a couple of quick buckets and he came off of it. Walker. Look at that foul. Oh, almost dunked it in. Michigan on the run. They love to do this. What? Michigan goes back to the front now. It comes up to two more. And some four points for Lloyd Vaught. 
I, I don't really think Michigan can lose sight of the fact that Derek Strong, who really probably all around is Xavier's best player, has got two fouls. And I think they've got to look to see who's guarding Strong the next time down the floor. There's a, I mean, uh, who's guarding Tyrone Hill the next time down the floor. Boy, Block just picked up the foul underneath the basket. It'll be a shooting violation. Xavier has already been to the free throw line three times. They've hit two of them. Of course, Ralph Hill's, Hill's the guy with two fouls. And I think Tyrone Hill, a key player in Michigan, and next time down, let's see if they go to him. They'll have time to talk it over. You see Pete Gillen on Xavier. It is 29-27. Michigan leads. Point line remained the same at 19 feet 9 inches. Then dial 900-260-6301. Move back to the international distance of 21 feet. Then dial 900-260-6302. Or move back to the pro distance of 23 feet 4 inches. If you'd like that, dial 900-260-6303. We're back to live action here in the Omni in Atlanta. Hill played a long time with two fouls on him. Strong's in the middle now at number 33. Hill's number 42 for Xavier. Michigan looks like they went to a zone that time and switched to defense. Hill. Will that play into the hands of Tyrone Hill now who has two fouls on him, Dan? Well, the big thing Hill's got to be careful of, he can't charge anybody, and he might be able to move in that zone and go ahead and look for the shot like he did in that situation. Now Xavier, and I really think this because of foul trouble, is going to switch around and go to the zone. That, go to the zone that look, it looks like it was the zone that time down. Rice doesn't hesitate to fire it up. Kimbrough. Strong in the middle. A try for three. It's out of bounds. Michigan's got to get it back. It's 29-29 here in Atlanta. Michigan is now hitting on 11 of 18 from the outside for 61%. Good shooting game. 13 of 21 for Xavier for 62%. Caleb is into the basketball game for Michigan. He plays a lot and plays well. Demetrius Caleb, 6'1", 160, a sophomore from Flint, only averaging 1.7 points a basketball game during the regular season. There's timeout on the floor with a score, Michigan 29, Xavier 29 here in Atlanta. We have our fourth tie of the afternoon on the boards right now in Atlanta. 8.37 to go in the first half, Xavier 29, Michigan 29. There's Bo. Bo Schembecker, there he is, the athletic director at Michigan. We'll told, have him on at halftime. Yep, told Bill Frieder he's not coaching anymore. He was down here yesterday for a press conference, then he left to go back for spring football practice. Blew back to him this morning. They finally get it in. Caleb with it. Good steal. Yes, it is. Strong. Strong with a big move. He has number six. Might get Reveal Robinson back in the game real quick. Bought it mid court. Caleb goes the foul. The foul's going to be on Stan Kimbrough, his first. Michigan really does a nice job, though. Once they break the press, they do attack, and they try to score. And that time, good pass in. Ramil Robinson was not out too long. After that turnover, Caleb goes back out. Robinson sat out, all in all, probably about 30 seconds. You just can't afford to keep him out of the game. Robinson making his own way down through there. Push off. The foul to push off your right. Push off. Bought. Bought draws his third foul. That's a lot of trouble already now for, for Michigan. Pete Gillen. The luck of the Irish going his way so far. He's leading 31-29. He set that city, the Queen City, on fire with the basketball teams he's produced in the last few years. Bought goes out of the game. He's hitting 69.4. First in the nation and field goal percentage. Rice is back in for it. Now Michigan going to show another little different. They're going to show a 1-3-1 one, one now. Try to get Reveal up on top. Maybe look to force some outside jumpers. They don't want the ball going down low. No penetration. Hill down low. This is Kimbo. Kimbo's a 5-11 senior out of Cleveland. Minor. A try for three by Davenport. Davenport beats Griffin. Xavier does a good job, Ralph, of penetrating against the zone to collapse it and then pitch it out for the shot. Xavier's one out of four from three-point land. Kimbrough looked as though he might have ideas again. 7.33 left, first half. Xavier by two. Davenport, heavy traffic and loses it. Ramel Robinson. Kimbrough's the only man who can cut him off. 
Robinson. Bad play. Well, no, Robinson has six. Just bring it in strong and dunk it. Game tied at 31 all. You know, Griffin made that play, though. you got to give him a lot of credit because he's the one that held position on a penetration by Davenport and caused the turnover. Now the Wolverines going to switch again. Looks like they're going to try to go a little bit man-to-man -man or try to match up out of that zone. Tim just threw it away. Second consecutive turnover on his many trips down the floor. Bill Robinson. All right, Mills did an excellent job that time of avoiding the charge to give the ball up. I and mean, what a play by a 6'10 man to run the floor and give it up to Ramiro Robinson. That's why they can't keep him out. He's just been a valuable asset for the Wolverines. Michigan back to the lead. Kimbrough now fighting. Davenport. The pump. It was. Bill, great oh, block by the little man, Ramel Robinson. Robinson is only 6'2". Mill from downtown Marietta, he goes in to dunk it. I thought he might right. jump over Kimbrough. <laughs> Kimbrough's 5'11". You've got to give him the courage award for this. What a block, though, at the other end by Ramil Robinson. And I think Tyrone Hill kind of underestimated. There's the pump fake on Rice. He thought he was home free here. Uh-uh. Robinson got all ball to initiate the fast break. And then, of course, Terry Mills tried to conclude it, but charged and picked up the foul. Steve Fisher has to like the effort. But he's got to be a little concerned here because Xavier's right up with him. 33-31. Xavier trails by two behind Michigan. <laughs> Upsets yesterday in NCAA first-round play. Xavier sensing they may be able to do it today here in Atlanta. A three-pointer puts them back out on top of Stan Kimbrough as five points. 34-33. Xavier. Now, now, I really think that Michigan's at, Now, let's, let's find out. They're in the zone, but Tyrone Hill's got two fouls. they got to bring it over to Mills' side. Try to get Mills the ball. He's open. Just throw it in there. See if they can get Mills the ball. Bryce, NBA type shooter. You don't have to listen to me. I mean, if you're open, just shoot it. Who cares? Back by two with the Wolverine. Well, yeah, I just think, though, that Xavier would be devastated if Bill went out of the game. It would really hurt him in the second half. Wrong. He walked before the charge. Nice flash up, though. Good move inside. Strong. Kimbrough gave him the pass. He just traveled with it. This telecast is presented by authority of the NCAA. Any use of this program without written consent is prohibited. The announcers for this program have been approved and contracted by NCAA Productions. Well, Michigan shooting the ball 67 percent. Of course, Xavier got off to a hot start. They cool later. They're at about 40. Now that's that's from three-point land, of course. They're both shooting well overall. 64 for Michigan and 60 percent for uh, Xavier. Thank you, Ralph. You saved me on that. That was three-point shooting. No wonder. Nice. Back up, Higgins. Oh, he touched it. Oh, he did. Basket interference. Good call. Looked like he touched it when it was in the cylinder. Ball might have had a chance to go in. John Higgins is in the game for the first time. He's 6'9", 195 pounds, sophomore out of Los Angeles. We'll look at some other scores as South Carolina trails NC State 30 to 16 in the first half. That's over in the East. Under five minutes to go. First half of play. Two point game. Michigan leads. Bill and Parker is in the game now for Xavier. That's the second three-pointer by Kimbrough. Two in a row for him. He has eight points. The average is almost 20 of all game, and it goes back now in favor of the Muskegon. Good steal. They're going to pick up a foul. The foul's going to be on Higgins. Actually, that's a foul that really helps his club because uh, Kimbrough was going to steal that one and take it right in. That's the second or third time that Kimbrough has been able to cause a lot of problems. They're trying to keep it out of Ramil Robinson's hands, and when Higgins has it, it's trouble because this guy right here, Kimbrough, can steal it. Kimbrough's going to be the man who puts it in play, the walker. Michigan comes out zoning. So if they're going to zone, they better introduce themselves to Kimbrough because he's made the last two. And somebody, they're, they're up on him now. Higgins is kind of trailing him a little bit. Well, now they go back man to man. Look, they were going to go to zone when they came out of it. Kimbrough. Good rebound. Three Hill. strong. Look at Ramil Robinson. Does he have control of those movements out there? Great point guard for Michigan. Well, now they've got Hill guarding Glenn Rice, and I think Rice could, could try to post him up. Rebound comes off to Kimbrough. Walker. Strong. Strong having a big afternoon, having eight points in the first half. On the way to his average of 14-8. 
And Ravel Robinson says, we want a timeout, Wolverines. And the Xavier fans go wild. They're on top 39-36. Dan, they have led by as many as four. The Xavier Musketeers shooting 61%. They're out rebounding a bigger Michigan ball club. Uh, actually tied in rebound at this particular point. And I think I'm playing the bigger Michigan club at this moment. Well, I don't think there's any question about it that they're out playing them, but, you know, Xavier's a pretty good basketball team, and Pete Dillon felt that we had to try to force some turnovers. We had to get our transition game going. He hoped to make some three-point shots, and he said if we can rebound with this club, if we can just allow them one shot at the basket and not get into foul trouble, we can cause some problems. And I've been really impressed with Xavier. Michigan, on the other hand, they might be shell-shocked a little bit. There's still a long way to go in this game. They've got a lot of guys, and I'm sure Steve Fisher's trying to calm down his club and hope that maybe they can go in tight at half, come out in the second half and play real strong. But Xavier's done a nice job so far. I pose this question to you in our warm-up here this afternoon in Atlanta. When you said that you didn't think that the Bill Frieders leaving would bother the team, how do you, again do you think that it will bother the coaches having to make their first big decisions as head coaches? Well, we're going to find out, aren't we? Because right now, that's what they're in. They're in a position, as you look at Xavier, they've, they've really done a nice job uh, over the years. But the Michigan Wolverines and their coaches right now, it's a kind of gut check time is what it is. They're probably telling their guys, look, here's some of the adjustments we're going to have to make. I think their shot selection, you know, we talked about that at the top of the show, has been pretty good. I mean, their shot selection it's good. I mean, look at that field goal percentage. Both teams not missing very many shots. And uh, it, it doesn't really say that the defenses have been bad. Both clubs just come out and shot the ball well. Indeed, they have 56 and 61 percent. Michigan's opposition has hit 45.4 percent on the year from the field, while Michigan as a team is at 57.3 percent on the year. Xavier is at 49.6 on the year from the outside. They've hit 36.7 from three-point land, but one of the big things you have to remember about Coach uh, Steve Fisher's ball club there of Michigan is they're a great three-point shooting team, hitting better than 46 and a half percent. Acting head coach of Michigan, he's done a nice job of handling all the pressure that's been put up on him as having the entire Michigan basketball team. 13 lead changes, eight ties in the ball game, Dan. And that time Xavier comes right out and changes their defense. Sean Higgins with a long jumper that did go, but that's one thing Xavier likes to do out of timeouts. They will change up and come out with a different defense. That's that good double up, and they get the long range miss and the ball again. They tried to cram it to Hill. Kembro. Scuro. He's got his own rebound. I like that shot. That's playground pass. I like that. Bring it in and just scoop on a finger roll, and he almost gets it. 315 left, first half. Xavier by three. The biggest lead has been four by Xavier. Hill. Oh, he's powerful in there, isn't he? They, get, they might see if they get Hill. I'm not sure if the foul's on Hill or if... It's on Mills. Oh, it is on Mills. Okay. Let's look at it again. Well, Tyrone Hill is a pretty good basketball player right here as he takes the baseline and comes in. I didn't know for sure if he got Hill with the push-off on the left hand or Mills over the back, but it was on Terry Mills. Davenport returns for Colin Parker. Davenport shot a well. The second foul on Terry Mills. Now, wise there have been nine called against uh, Michigan. There have only been four team fouls called on Xavier, and Hill at the line has two of those. And I really look for Pete Gillen to maybe get Hill out of the game in the last two minutes because he doesn't want him to pick up that third foul. He's done a nice job of not committing the third foul. He's had it. I think he had it by, by what, 12, 13 minutes to go in the half, and he's been able to stay out. Tyrone Hill, look at that season average at almost 19 points a game, and I'm sure Coach Gillen hopes to get another minute out of him and then get him out of the game. That's the biggest lead of the afternoon for either ball club, and it's now being enjoyed by Xavier. They put the three quarter court pressure on. Bill. Hughes just jumps it off as Hughes gets his sixth point. Under control that time, Terry Mills avoided the charge. Xavier with the ball back, and Michigan's not going to stay in that zone because of Kimbrough's long range shooting, so they're going to go back man to man. This is Davenport to Kimbrough. Kimbrough has eight points, two three pointers. Walker. Hill. Rice on the rebound. Rice, better believe it or not, is only his second rebound of the ball game. He's five out of 11 from the outside, though, for 13 points. Let's see if Mills can move on him a little bit. No, he decides to pass it off. Good steal. Is he quick, Kimbrough? Came in the back door, took it away, then dropped it away out of bounds. 
college basketball, you can't win without good guards. You see Kimbrough right there, very exciting. Guards dictate tempo. They make good decisions in transition, and they control the ball all the time. And you better have somebody out there who can make good pass selection and knows what he's doing, and you're going to have some big problems. Xavier's bench has outscored Michigan's 10-6 in the game. Now, this is Mills. He's a starter, and he gets his six points. He averages about 16 and a half points a ball game. That makes it a 41-40 game, as Michigan has whittled four points off of the lead of Xavier. Now we're inside of two minutes, and I'm really surprised that they're keeping Tyrone Hill in the game. And they actually made no move to pull him out. Yeah, well, they got him out for a little while, and I, and I thought in the last two minutes with the ball, they might just make a quick sub, but it looks like they're not going to do that. Let's hope he doesn't pick up his third. I'm trying to the first of the time that he stepped up the line and got the free throws a moment ago. Here's Kimbrough. The five for three. He was on the rebound. He was going to the board awful hard since he's been into the game. He was just picked up his fourth rebound, which makes him the leading rebounder in the ball game for Michigan. Mills against Hill. Knocked away. See, there's the third. Now that see that that's gonna really hurt him. And they were trying, I believe, yeah. were they not to get him out over there. That's too late. Too late now. Not a good decision. Ill advised foul by Tyrone Hill. That's something you don't need to do. Picks up his third foul with a minute and 16 seconds left in the half. And I'll tell you, that one hurts. That could cost you the game right there. We may look back to the final five minutes of the first half and see where the gamble was made by Xavier. And as you said, uh, Ralph, they were trying to get him out of the game. He just couldn't do it. Robinson as he puts Michigan back out on top with his 12th point of the afternoon, 42-41. We're nearing the one-minute mark for the first half. Jamal Walker. Minor. Davenport. Strong. Up against Mills, and he got it. Derek Strong gets his 10th point. And it goes back in favor of Xavier at 43 42. And it's been a heavy favorite coming into the game. Got an opportunity now to run the clock and maybe play for one. Emil Robinson, now they need good half court selection and just back it out, make sure they get a good shot. Hughes backs it out. Shot clock is off. 24 seconds to run down. And they had a mismatch, and Mills was being guarded by a much smaller player, but really the decision now, they're going to get a five-second call. He didn't do anything with it with Walker running. Yeah, he got Gillen with his ball club having 16 seconds to get it in and score. Well, when you've got the ball and you're closely guarded, you're going to have to either put it on the ground or do something with it. That time, Ramil Robinson made a mistake and just held on to it. Now they're going to give Xavier a chance. That's a tenth turnover for Michigan early, and you're going to give Xavier a chance at the last shot. Try to shoot it with about six to go to give you a chance to board it in if you miss. They make the move. Kimbrough for the bucket, and he got it. Kimbrough comes up with number nine. Oh, and they steal it. Look at this. Look. Oh. The steal, of course, was by number 10, Jamal Walker, on the 11th turnover of the afternoon. And Pete Gillen has got to be really pleased with the way his ball club has performed. And he has to be really nervous with the fact that Tyrone Hill is on the bench. As the Xavier Musketeers are shocking the Michigan Wolverines by a score of 45-42 in Atlanta. Uh, we were going to go back to Ralph, but let's see if we can get Coach Hembecker to come in. Uh, First of all, thanks, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sneak over here so we can get these camera angles correctly and they can get you on the right track. Maybe you can give us, uh, Coach, a little bit uh, a little bit about, you know, we all know what transpired, but maybe some of your feelings about the whole situation. Well, it's just one of those things that uh, I felt uh, in the best interest of uh, the Michigan Athletic Department that um, when someone takes a job somewhere else, I think we ought to have someone within the department coach the what, what was it was it surprising to you that it happened did, did anybody know what was going on was it just a shot I think, I think everybody was surprised sure oh yeah that was uh, that was a big surprise because it looked like that uh, talking to coach Frieder that he you know he said some things like he had to make a quick decision but certainly the timing isn't good for anybody that's the thing that bothers me I think the timing was tough that's right that's really the only problem with it it's um, you know I just don't think you should uh, leave a team when you're going into a postseason tournament or in a postseason bowl game for football. And um, so he chose to do that. And uh, I chose to have somebody in the department coach the team. 
Do, do you think, Coach, that it has any effect on what's going on here today? I mean, Xavier is a very good basketball team. Well, I, I, I don't know that. I think you've got to understand, which I'm sure you do, that uh, anyone in this tournament can beat any other team. You don't get into the tournament unless you know how to play the game. And so the Xavier team has played an outstanding first half, and uh, they lead by a couple of points. Well, Bo, thanks very much for talking with us. We appreciate it. I, I know it's been a trying time for you and everybody else in Michigan, but best of luck to you. All right, thank you very much. All right, Bo Schembecker, and now let's go back to Ralph Hacker. Well, former Michigan coach Bill Frieder said he was going to buy a ticket to come into the game. We haven't seen him yet. We've got a three-point difference here in Atlanta. And we'll return with more halftime activities after these messages. Two, Xavier leads over Michigan. This is Ralph Acker along with Dan Belwamini. And what are the surprises for you here in the first half in Atlanta? Well, I think a major surprise, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Ralph, is the ability of Xavier really to handle the basketball and to rebound with Michigan and to have excellent shot selection and the ability to get steals. They've been able to cause Michigan a lot of problems, and I thought Michigan would dominate inside, but that hasn't really been the case. Let's look at Ramel Robinson. What a great basketball player this young man is. Well, Ramel Robinson's really made a big impact in the game, and I think, uh, you know, they took him out for 30 seconds, and they turned it over a couple of times, and they need him in because Ramel Robinson can, of course, give the ball up, and he opened court. He gave it to Vaught that time, who brought it in for an easy score, and I think that uh, Ramel Robinson is the main guy that causes problems. Now, the, the game plan for Xavier was to try to get some steals double up as much as possible and see if you can get some turnovers and when they steal the ball and they get it inside and Derek Strong could pick it up on the transition and score then Xavier really causes a lot of problems there was a big problem there with Tyrone Hill picking up his third foul late in that first half of play it's 45 42 Xavier on St. Patrick's Day leads over Michigan by three we'll be back for the second half of today's game right after this the 1989 NCAA Basketball Championship. Brought to you by Rawlings Sporting Goods, maker of the official ball for NCAA Basketball Championships. By Pizza Hut, official corporate sponsor of the NCAA. And by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. The second half just started with Ramil Robinson getting two. Xavier missing and Ramil coming right back and he's fouled. The foul is going to be on number 20. That's Today's game is brought to you by Miller Lite. For great taste, there is only one beer. Miller Lite. By Michigan Bell at Ameritech Company. Solutions that work. And by Metro Detroit's quality dealers. But was late. Goes out of bounds. And there's Steve Fisher calling out an out-of-bounds play. I don't think Xavier, see if Xavier mans him on the out-of-bounds. Looks like they are going to run it man-to-man -man on the out-of-bounds, so Michigan might be able to do something here if they can execute. Michigan getting ready to put it in play after they cut the lead down to just one. You have to wonder if Steve Fisher peeled the paint at halftime of his first ball game as a head coach. It's out-of-bounds, and Michigan's going to get it back. Hill was trying to help him out, saying, I didn't touch it. Uh, one thing Hill's got to be thinking about right now it's not whether the ball went out of bounds or not. He's got to be really concentrating on not making a foul because he's got three and he's guarding Terry Mills. I wouldn't be surprised if Mills tries to take it inside. There's the good inside move by Rice. Bought with a nice rebound. He's up against Hill and he misses it. They missed two in a row. Michigan now gave him another chance at it. They lead the rebound at 16-12 now. Dominic is getting all four rebounds in the second half of play. Mills. Finally, he gets one to four. Michigan is now hitting on 56 percent. They had four shots at it that time, Rob. Can't give him four shots. Michigan so far in the first couple of minutes has really taken the game. The Xavier dominated him actually in the first two minutes of the second half. Xavier going back to the front with a two-point here. The steal by Xavier. This is Davenport. Griffin dropping off to pick him up. Walker 
Hill, he got it. A foul. Michigan. Willie Griffin committing the foul. He had two shots to, to commit the foul, and he finally did it. Well, everything, though, was keyed by the steal. Davenport, nice job of pulling up, because Griffin was going to take the charge. But look at the rebound here by the little guy. Walker able to get that one up in traffic, but Tyrone Hill's going to finish it with the rebound and the score. Well, well Hughes comes quick because of, <laughs> I'm sure Fisher didn't like that. They had three shots at it. Hughes going to come in the game. At the line is Tyrone Hill. On the year, he had 69.2 from the free throw line. Hill 2 of 2 today. As Glenn Rice made a violation. Let's see if he misses it. Now he made it. Rice looked like he moved in that time. And he moved prior to the shot. Didn't matter because it went down. No, it's not a two-shotter. It's a one-shotter, guys. He made the free throw. He made the free throw. He can't give a four-point play. Now, here's the situation. As Pete Gillum's looking on, and there's, there's Steve Fisher, the acting head coach. They are saying the officials got confused on who the foul was on. The official scored. They originally had called it on number 20. That's Mike Griffin. That will be his second foul. And then they ask again. They signal, no, it's on 21. <laughs> If it was on Romel Robinson, it would have been his third. And Griffin would have been his second. Makes a big difference. There's the pressure and the lob. Oh, look out now. And they give it to Robinson, by the way. Officially now. There's Robinson putting it out. He gets on the weight real hard in the offseason. You can see how it pays off for him. Bill Robinson getting his 17th point of the ball game. Tyrone Hill really couldn't do much about it. He tried to stay away and not look at that. This one out was blocked, too. Robinson gets it right back. 50-48. Xavier by two. Rice shoots it from anywhere on the floor. He has the green light as soon as he leaves the dressing room. The Mills. They can't get the handle. Halfed up finally. Has four more tries out before it's finally tapped in. Like Terry Mills. Well, the first time, first time Mills had the ball, he's being guarded by by Tyrone Hill, and he shoots a little bit of a fadeaway. He's got to take it straight to the hoop. There's a pass inside the strong. Strong, I really think, has done a nice job. He's been a key player for Xavier. Hill in foul trouble, but Strong has come on the score. Hold, almost loose to Robinson against Davenport. Robinson coming back with 19. Robinson playing with three fouls. Walker, Jamal Walker against Robinson. Kimbrough. Pete Gillum hold up his hands. He said, now settle it down a little bit. Four times, 52 all. Second time in this half, we've had a time. Hill. And now Xavier goes back out on top. 15 points for Tyrone Hill. Nice pass that time by Jamal Walker. Just brings it right over, dumps it inside. Hill can score when he gets it in the air. Robinson leaving Kimbrough. Kimbrough is the man who deflected the pass out of bounds. Yeah. Nice job by Kimbrough that time to get back in the passing lane. When his man went by him and went to the basket, Kimbrough didn't stand out there and watch. He went to the hoop. They're going to take Tyrone Hill out now. And they're going to have to play that kind of a matchup game to get him out, rest him for a couple of minutes, hope that he doesn't pick up that fourth foul, then put him back in. Minor came in for him. Caleb comes in for Robinson of Michigan. Griffith. Out the way. Played a lot of the first half of play. Mills, Terry Mills has 12 points. 54 all third time. Second half, Xavier and Michigan going at it with Davenport misses on a three-point attempt. Xavier didn't even have all the players down the floor that time. Davenport came down to the long range jumper. Both teams well over 50% of this moment as Caleb misses it. Strong of the rebound. They got a three-on-one break. That's minor. He gets his fourth point. 56 54. Xavier goes back to the front. Nice transition. Kimbrough keyed it. Now the press is on. Walker's done a good job. This little guard combination. They pick up a midcourt foul here. But Walker and Kimbrough do cause problems defensively. And Jamal Walker is the man the foul is on. That is his second foul. They just get the ball out of bounds to Michigan. Michigan, a big, strong ball club. They've got 6'7", 6'10", 6'4", 6'7", 6'2". They can come back with 6'9", 6'8", 6'10", if they like. A little scrappy ball club. Xavier, though, is beating him. Here's Davenport, and he leads by four. Davenport with 13. Well, I'm really impressed with Kimball. And that was not an easy pass. He gave it up and made about a 
20, 25 foot pass over the top, and he almost steals it again. Look at this. A jump ball. It's going to go over to Xavier, uh, and that'll be 14 turnovers for the ball game. That is three turnovers in this half for Michigan. Well, the steal. There's the there's the steal on the on the pad. Look at this pass. Kimbo just throws it out in front. A baseball pass for a touchdown. And he just gets it right in there. They come back with Hill. Is this too quick to gamble with Hill getting into the game with those three fouls, Dan? Well, they're coming back for him for this reason. They got the ball on offense, and they're going to take Strong out and hope that Tyrone Hill does not pick up another foul. But you're in the NCAA tournament. You, you look at turnovers, Michigan with 13, Xavier only eight. But Hill's going to have to play smart. His third foul was not a smart play. He reached in. Davin Ford and Minor exchanging passes. A try for two. The foul's going to be on Xavier, and it's going to be on Miner. That for Miner will be his first foul. It'll be out of bounds to Michigan. Third team foul this in his hand on Xavier. Of course, Ramiel Robinson came back in a hurry. Sean Higgins is going to come in. Sean Higgins did not score in the first half, and he's a talent, and they need him to get some points. Kimbrough's going to try to put some pressure on Robinson. And here's the double team. Here they come. Mills had a big second half so far. Out of bounds, Xavier will get it back. Hill helping out a little bit with the officiating at this particular point. As Hill says, hey, I didn't touch the ball. They forced it out of my hands. There's time out on the court with a score, Xavier 58, Michigan 54. That is the Michigan band, but they're not from Michigan. Oh, no? It's the scab band from Georgia State here in Atlanta. <laughs> they're getting $35 to $40 each today and a baseball cap with Michigan on it to play <laughs> in the second half. Check this guy out right there. You see the guy with the long hair? I like him. The second half, Xavier 6 of 11 for 55%, Michigan 6 of 14 for 43. This is Ralph Acker along with Dan Belwama. We're happy you could join us today here in Atlanta, where Xavier leads at 58 54. There's the shooting attack just for the second half and for the game. Xavier with it and another quick foul. This time it's got to be on Hill. That'll be his fourth. Foul. Yep. Was it, on? it was, it was, I think, a defensive foul call, okay. called by Norm Baruki. And I think it was on Mark Hughes with the push. He was well, guarding Hill. Tyrone Hill looked as though he thought he was on him for a moment. Packer and Dan Belwamini here in Atlanta, Georgia. 58-54, 14-35 to go. Stan Kimbrough has just committed his second foul. Xavier leads, and they've led with the exception of one play down the court of this half. Xavier really doing a nice job that time. And if it wasn't for Ramiel Robinson, who's got the ball right now, Michigan be in big trouble. He's had an outstanding game. Every time they've taken Robinson out of the game, they've made turnovers, and they just can't afford to do that. He's really directed and led this club and been able to pass it and score a lot of points. Robinson has three fouls. He has 19 points in the ball game. This is Terry Mills. Big second half for Mills. That's one. He just picked up his 14th point of the game. His eight for the second half. Baseball pass, and Higgins had it for a moment. That's a great try to save it on the other sideline by Stan Kimbrough, but it goes out of bounds. 58-56, Michigan could tie or go ahead. This trip down court. At halftime, it was 45-42, Xavier. Kimbrough going to try to put some pressure, and he's been able to do that. Kimbrough's gone for some steals. Now they might look to double-team Robinson, but they got to contain him here. See if it's Strong or Hill. If it's Hill, it's his fourth, and that would be a severe blow, but I think it may be on Strong. And it's Strong's first personal foul. It's going to be a shooting violation. And they'll go to the line with a chance to tie it up here at Atlanta. Ramil Robinson, of course, he has such lightning speed and can take it into traffic very strong. And that time suspends himself in midair. Strong picks up the foul. It'll be a two-shot opportunity for Ramil Robinson. A nice crowd on hand for both ball clubs. Watch this first round game for them. Ramil Robinson. From the free throw line, Ramil Robinson is two out of three after that shot. One shot. Now, we were talking to Pete Gillen, uh, of course, yesterday, as you see the numbers on Romeo Robinson. And Gillen said, look, if we can get into the second half and keep this game tight, you know, our players are really going to have a, an analyzation that they can win. Robinson sees high as 24. He's on his way there now, already having picked up 20 points in this game. 58-57, Xavier by one. 
Now they've made a few turnovers, haven't they, in the second half. Now make a good decision here and slow it down, which he did. Oh, not a very good pass. And they steal it right back. It happens to be the 15th turnover for Michigan. Make it now 11 turnovers for Xavier. Make Mills on the Snowbird and slam it at home. 16 for Terry Mills. Timeout, timeout, Xavier. Can't afford to do that. 13-25, second timeout for Xavier. The timeout on the floor. The score, Michigan taking the lead, 59-58 over Xavier. And Xavier turning the ball over an awful lot. There's another turnover for the Musketeers. They're 12th of the game. Michigan's had a pretty good spurt route the last two or three minutes. They've been able to cause turnovers. They've been able to score and control the game. This is real key time for Xavier. They're right in it. I'm sure Pete Gillen would have taken this situation. 13 minutes to go and only down one. But Michigan's starting to play well. Michigan's biggest lead of the ball game. But one, they had it in the first half. And again here in the second half. Looking for the biggest lead now. There it is. Now, Mills has done the job the second half. I mean, he's really come out and taken the ball to Tyrone Hill, who's got three fouls, and Michigan with a good adjustment at halftime to make those good decisions in the half court. Both Terry Mills and Robinson on their way to a high of the year here in this ball game. They're not far away from it. But Robinson has just drawn his fourth foul of the afternoon. Well, that may be a gigantic call there against the Wolverines. If, in fact, that's his fourth foul, now Steve Fisher's going to have to make some decisions. They can't have this guy out of the game. As soon as they've taken him out, all of a sudden, Michigan has gone down, and Robinson's had a big ball game, and he's going to have to sit with 12 minutes and 36 seconds to play. He is to probably have to sit six, seven minutes. But Caleb's going to have a lot of pressure on him. Xavier has met Big Ten teams twice in postseason tournament play, and they're one and one. They beat Ohio State in the NIT in 84, and later that year, lost to Michigan. Makes it a 61 60 ball game. Well, how good is this guy, Kimball? He's got 12 points, played awfully well. I mean, he just bought that trap. There's a double team. You gotta figure Kimbrough still has only half of his average, a little more than half. He's averaging almost 20 a game. Sean Higgins. Oh, good pressure that time. What, what a double team. Almost get it. There's a long jump. Rice. Hill on the rebound. Brings it out against Mills. Davenport against Caleb. Davenport comes back with his 15 point, and Xavier, with Robinson on the bench, has gone back to the front by one. Good timeout by Pete Gillen the last time. Now it's going to be Michigan's turn to take a timeout. Steve Fisher doesn't like the way it's going. That's because Romeo Robinson isn't playing. Well, Michigan again looks up. They're down by one with timeout on the court with a score Xavier 62, Michigan 61. And he's able to get it in transition, and his penetration has caused a lot of problems. Here's just a fine move to avoid the charge and just get it up off the glass. Very impressed with Stan Kimbrough. Now the defensive adjustment. See if Xavier comes out of this with a change. Michigan called the timeout. Michigan with the ball. Looking for the lead. He threw it up hard enough to break the glass. Rice. Looked like he pushed off. I think it was Rice pushing his first foul. David Libby, of course, out of the Big West Conference that time, makes the call. The fouls are like this. Hill has three. Robinson, four bought three for Michigan. And Fisher, Steve Fisher, did not want that guy right there, Robinson, to have his fourth foul. And this is the chance for Xavier. Good pass. Hill in a crowd draws another foul from Michigan. Well, he took it up in heavy traffic down there. It's all different. You know, Kimbrough and Walker are not very big. I mean, you've got two guards out there. They're about 5'11". But they have caused a lot of problems as Lloyd Vaught now picks up his fourth foul. So you got Robinson and Vaught with four fouls. Steve Fisher's going to have to make some decisions. Hill with the line for two tries. 62-61. Hill from the line is perfect today. Three of three. He has 16 points. His average is 18-7 on the season. And really the only senior on this club is uh, is Kimbrough. As you see Tyrone Hill's numbers. I mean, you got Hill, but everybody else back for Xavier. 17 points for Tyrone Hill. What a job Pete Gillen has done up in Cincinnati with his ball club. Michigan having a chance to punt. Oh, he cut off so good, and it was a 
foul? Was it on Hill? If it was, it was a real cheap foul by Hill, and it'll be his foot. Boy, that one certainly hurt. I thought I thought Rice might have touched the ball while it was in the cylinder, and Hill made the foul from underneath. Remember 11:20 on the clock if you're a Xavier fan. Here's the pull-up by Vaught. And there's the play underneath. Well, the, you're right. There wasn't much of a foul there, and I thought Rice touched it on the cylinder, but the foul definitely on Tyrone Hill, and he'll come out. Miner comes back in. So now Hill's going to have to sit. I'm a little surprised they called that it was so late. Miner's into the game. Well, he's made a couple of plays. Like Rice on the miss. Kimbrough on the rebound. Look at this move. The foul will be right back on Rice. What a great move Jamal Walker made going for the bucket. From the Bronx, Jamal Walker. Done this a number of times. And there's Kimbrough, the little diminutive guard combination is going to take it in there, draw the foul on Glenn Rice and bring it up in traffic. I like these two guys. I like Walker and Kimbrough. We don't want to diminish, diminish the effect of the big man, especially Hill underneath their rebounding when he's the number two rebounder in America. But as long as Michigan attempts those long shots, the three pointers of the long two pointers, you're going to get long rebounds, and little guards are going to play a big point of this. And, and when they get it in the open court, uh, both of these fellows can convert. Jamal Walker, I thought, played very well, did not start. But a guy that comes off the bench and plays a lot of minutes, and it's not who you start the game with, it's who you finish it. Walker's going to be in there in crunch time, and now they're going to try to put some pressure in the backboard on Caleb. See if they look at double team. Here they come right now. And he gets through it. Well, they don't give up one. Mills, the big man on the outside. Terry Mills. Good play into Rice. Rice with his 15 point, but he has been strangely silent through the first nine minutes and 10 seconds of this half. That's his first bucket. First bucket, and thanks to uh, the benefactor of a good pass by Mills. There's a foul by Mills. Oh, strong. What an effort. Strong, looking strong on that one. Now, Strong is 6 feet, 225. Mills is 6'10, 230. Strong gets it inside. Derek Strong hard to the basket and, and did a nice job to get it in. Terry Mills with the foul. Strong's got a chance to complete a three-point play. I'd like to see that one again on the inside. There's Griffin coming into the game, number 20. He was a starter for Michigan. He hasn't scored, but he's played a lot. Vaught goes out. Vaught Vaught has, is at the line. He has four personal fouls that got him out of the game. That'll be 16 points, 68, 63. Pete Gillen said that if Xavier beat Michigan, there would be a congressional investigation after the game. Caleb with it. Griffin with it. They have won everything that has been scrapped throughout the floor. Xavier has picked up. Rice on the rebound. Here it goes. Higgins. John Higgins getting his first points of the day. 68-65. Now, Michigan needs to make a run with 10-10 left. I'm really surprised that Kimbrough shot that one that time. I thought they'd set it up. There's Walker with the penetration. Well, they go right at you, and it might be Mills again. It is. That'll be four on Mills, becoming the third player for Michigan to pick up. Four fouls. We got some key guys in foul trouble. Now, Steve Fisher is going to have to get Hughes back in. Mills will go out. Now this Michigan club not quite as intimidating around the basket as you see Terry Mills with his fourth personal foul, and he'll join Ramil Robinson, who's got four. The longer that Xavier can lead or stay in the game, I think the more confidence they, they get against this Michigan club. Oh, I think, Ralph, they got it right now. I mean, they, they definitely have to feel that they can win this game, and they were apprehensive about it when it started. And maybe at halftime, the strong this is the first of two. They got to feel right now they got the lead in 10 minutes to go. Derek Strong has 17 bookings. He has 17, Tyrone Hill has 17. The goal leaders in scoring for Xavier. Caleb. Now they're all over you, those two guys. Pete Walker and Kimbrough, they don't give you a breath. Yes, across the midway point of the second half. You're going to pick your pocket any chance. There's a nice pass and good help. Look out, here they go again. Jamal Walker. The foul. 
And it's going to be on Griffin. That'll be three on him. Two-shot violation. And Davenport, who I think has played a whale of a ball game, is the man who goes in there and causes the foul to happen. Pete Gillum. Yeah, yeah he's choreographing this whole thing and doing a nice job. He has to be happy with his guard play. His guard play, they just control the game. And Pete's talking to his assistants and talking to Tyrone Hill. Tyrone Hill started to get up on the bench. Well, he thought he was going in the game. He said, no, sit down. You're not going in. Davenport has 16. There's Hill. What a nice young man. He was one. He and Davenport were in the press conference yesterday for Xavier. Yeah, they handled themselves very well. well I've been impressed with everybody in the press conference. It seems like there are a lot of classy teams in this conference, and all these young guys know how to handle themselves. Davenport gets a pair and right into the press. Here we go again. He's the third major player to get 17 points in the game. 71-65. That is the biggest lead that Xavier has had. A blocking foul. Well, Caleb made a big play that time. The foul's going to be on Strong, his second. The basket counts. Strong was a little late. Now, he can move, but was his upper body there? And that time, he looked like he was off to the side. Demetrius Caleb, that time, with a good play, saw it. An avenue to the basket and got between players to get it up and in. They needed that one. And, and I think it's going to give Caleb a little confidence. He knows Reveal Robinson's not coming back in for a little while. So that score may really help this club. That is his first bucket of the afternoon. Right now, Michigan is hitting 54% from the field. Xavier's hitting 56%. Rebounding-wise, Michigan has 26. Xavier has 20. And from the free throw line, that makes Michigan 6 out of 7. Well, they needed that play. Walker with it. Michigan, of course, is the leading field goal shooting team in America. 57-3. Strong on the inside. See if they get a push off. He did. Yeah, I think that's a great call. Great call. Yes, no doubt about it. Yeah. Bob Barnett with the call, and I thought that Strong took it in and pushed off with his left arm. This was right on the play. Third foul on Strong. Hill has four. Kimbrough has two. Walker has two for Xavier. 71-68. John Higgins with the ball. The Griffin. Caleb. I think right here, Ralph, they've got to look to Rice a little bit. He's got to take control of the game. And the rebound by Kimbrough. The little man steps in and pulls out another one. That's five rebounds for him today. He is the leading rebounder just behind Strong. And Mr. Strong with a foul. No call. Nothing. Oh, it's no foul. Nothing, huh? Well, okay. Let's just keep playing. Oh, he almost turned it over mid. He did. That's see, only 16 turnovers for Michigan. See, see, Caleb's got to come back to get the ball in that situation. As Strong may have hurt his back as he's on the ground. And that and he fell down, of course, when there was no call. He took it to the basket, and Michigan could not take advantage of it as they turned it over. Let's hope that Strong is all right. Let's look at this one again. Well, what he tried to do was force it up in traffic. Griffin and Hughes just holding position, everybody on the ground. It seems like something has to happen there, but no call. And you just keep playing. And Strong may have hurt his back a little bit, but remains in the game. They give him a few seconds to walk it over. Those are turnovers. Michigan in 16. Of course, Xavier, I thought they had to keep their turnovers down. And they really have. They, they've done a pretty good job of controlling the ball. These two little guards here are tough. Walker looking to pass it all the time. Jim Rose. Hill in there, of course, with four fouls back in the game. He's got to be careful. That's a tough shot at the clock. I think Rice got a piece of it. See if they call it the other way. I thought Rice might have, I thought Rice might have deflected that. You mean that was an air ball? I thought he had a little piece of it. I don't think you'd miss it that bad. Looked like one of my shots. Yeah. <laughs> That's Pete Gillett on the sideline. He faces up and down as Griffin goes out of the game for Michigan. 71-68. To go. Michigan in the short end. They trailed for most of this game. They trailed at the half by three. Ramil Robinson back into the game when he has been in there. They have been able to go back to the front. Yeah, in fact, they had the lead when he went out, and now he comes back in trailing by three, and he's going in a lot sooner than Steve Fisher would like. And here's the outside jumper. That's Sean Higgins getting his fourth play. 71 70. Long dry spell now for Xavier's Musketeers. Jamal Walker. And 
timeout called by Xavier. That is the third timeout called by the Musketeers. It comes to 7.43 to go. Timeout of the court. The score is 71-70. Xavier leads over the Wolverines. This is Ralph Hacker. We're in Atlanta, Georgia. The big story, I think, for Michigan in the second half is the fact that Glenn Rice really hasn't been a factor. The man who led the Big Ten in scoring with 24-4-8 a game. Second leading score of all time at uh, Michigan. Has 15 today with 13 of those in the first half. And, of course, yes, yeah, he said most of those early. As Steve Fisher right now talking to Terry Mills, who picked up his fourth personal foul. And there's a field goal percentage. And both teams really doing a nice job. They're getting good shot selection, making their making the shots they have to. And Xavier, we felt, really had to shoot 50, 55% if they had a chance to win it. Now, coming out of the timeout, very important for Xavier to run something solid and to score out of the timeout. Kimbrough, again, in traffic, is going to draw the foul. They have a chance to score, but it's going to be from the free throw line. Taking it inside against Rice and Caleb, and it's going to be on uh, Higgins, who came in from the other side again. Ralph, these two guards aren't intimidated by bigger guys. I mean, they just take it right in at you. And Kimbrell that time just brought it right in and just used good body control. Kimbrell's only 5'11". Now, now look for look for Xavier if they can get these two down to go into some kind of a press because Tyrone Hill, their biggest and best rebounder, is not in there on the free throw lane. And there's another score. Syracuse, a little closer game than everyone anticipated in the Midwest, Midwest Regional. And, ooh, South Carolina coming back a little bit. See if they press now. See if they go into something full court. 13 for Kimbrough. There it is. Sean Higgins. He started to come alive as a play. Hit his last two tries. Two-point game. Michigan with the short end. They got Tyrone Hill guarding Higgins. Higgins got a move on. See, nice play by Higgins. Didn't get the basket, but Hill couldn't guard him. Ooh, there's a long pass. Going to go out of bounds, I think. Trying to get too much too soon, it looked like. Rice comes up for the basketball. That for Hill is his fourth rebound of the day. That's well off his average. Of 12 and a half rebounds a game. Well, I think foul problems have caused that. He's not playing very aggressively on defense. He's just, in fact, he's guarding a small guy in Higgins. And see if Michigan can recognize. Leo Robinson goes on the inside and gets the foul on number 11, Stan Kimbrough, his third. Well, that was a little questionable that time because I thought that Kimbrough had an opportunity to draw the fifth on Ramil Robinson, and Robinson has to be careful. There's, there's the huddle up by Xavier. They're probably going to call some kind of a play out of this huddle, and there's your foul trouble. A lot of people with four. And Robinson with a chance to tie the ball game up as he steps up there. Robinson, three out of four from the charity stripe. Neither team really burning it up now in the second half for the game. Each team hitting about 75%. Six of eight for Michigan, 13 of 17 for Xavier. Michigan has two more field goals than does uh, Xavier at this point. I think Michigan's done a pretty good job in the last three minutes of defending Xavier. Xavier needs to score. They need to come out of this thing, and there's a nice penetration. That little guy said, missed the shot, missed an easy one. Strong on his second attempt. Third shot all together. Gets his 19th point. Strong's having a big afternoon. He's five points over his average. Of course, with Terry Mills out of there, Michigan not quite the rebounding team, and there's Rice with an outside. He really has not shot the ball very well. Oh, Caleb. Put back for Caleb comes up with his fifth point. That is the 14th second chance for by Michigan. Oh, no call. And they scored. I mean, Walker, one thing you got to admire, just keep playing. Play the whistle. Don't anticipate. Higgins. A foul, and you have a chance to tie it up. That's Davenport getting his second foul. Well, the officials definitely let the play as Kimbrough takes it in. There's the jump and the block and the catch by Robinson, who drops it. Walker just picks it up and puts it back in. Sean Higgins getting his sixth point. Now they're going to bring Terry Mills back now. I kind of thought that smaller team, when they had Caleb and Robinson at the game at the same time, was negating that guard pressure that Xavier was able to put on. Now they're going to go back with a bigger team. Higgins has come to life in the second half. 74 and a half percent for the free throw line of the year. First time we have had since we're at 54 all. Now it's 76 all. Michigan, Satan, 549 left. 
Michigan going to drop back in a 1-2-2 zone. Uh, they better get to Stanley Kimbrough. Well, now I thought they, they looked zone, now they're back man to man. Oh, what a nice call. Don't they do a superb job of getting the ball inside? Good post up and spot up by Tyrone Hill. Kimbrough initiates from the top of the key. And they do recognize well. Xavier comes down, and all those defenses, they do recognize what's going on. And it looked like, was that foul on Hughes? It was indeed on Hughes. That'll be his second foul. Both teams are now in the bonus. Tyrone Hill, a lot of times since he scores. He has 17 points for the game. We said a moment ago, only four rebounds. Well, they may get down to a free throw shooting contest at the end inside of five minutes. Both teams in a one on one. You've got to be able to make the free throws. And Xavier loves to get into their presses after they can get the free throws down. So they might look to do something full court again. Look for a double team and a steal. They lead by two. 19 points by Tyrone Hill. Caleb gets into the game for Michigan. Good substitution. Good substitution by Steve Fee. He's anticipating a press. He's going to put a smaller team in the lineup. See if they can handle it. Ramil Robinson against Kimbrough. Might get a 10. Be careful. He's getting a little close to 10. They got it. Well, that 10 second count, they got a little lackadaisical bringing a ball up the floor. Their 17th turnover. Is that correct? It is indeed. Thank you. Now, Xavier has scored 19 points after turnovers this afternoon. Oh, is that important? They've been able to convert it. Xavier with a two point lead with about five and a half to go and the ball. Hill down low. Big defensive play by Rice to get the ball. But he dropped it out of bounds. Last touch power. Yeah, I don't know where Hill was going with that pass. He was throwing it to a little guy running inside. And Pete Gillum was upset at that. But back in their press, Walker trying to give Caleb some problems. Now they're going to look to double up right here at half court. Neither team to the three-quarter in this half of play. Rice. He gets his 17th point, tying the game at 78. Nice pass by Mills. He made a good recognition right back to Xavier. Close the three-quarter. Seven for you. It's been a great game, though. Both these teams are playing. They only give him two. Make it 80 78. Well, no help over the top. They're going to look at Mills again. That'll be three if it goes. There's no doubt about that. He was so far behind the line. What did we say about Rice? <laughs> we said Rice is off to a slow start. He just drills the three, beat Gillett, saying that's okay. Run your motion. Michigan now with a one point lead. And back in the zone. Of course, they've got severe foul problems. Xavier trying to get it inside. Oh, no call there. Now, that could have been the fifth on Mills, but no call. Pete Gillick didn't like that. Michigan has now hit their last four shots. They've taken the lead by one. Just over four minutes to go. The foul's going to be on Kimberly. That'll be four on him. That's going to be an interesting matchup. Kimbrough is going against Robinson to see who, if either, will come up with a fifth foul. Well, I, think, I, I think those fouls, when you get fouls on Kimbrough, it's going to hurt his aggressiveness. You see, he picks up his fourth foul, so he's not going to be as apt to go back and look for steals and look for double teams. He's going to have to play a little bit more conservative. Robinson at the line for one of the bonus. Michigan has scored over 80 points in 25 games this year. Well, they have done so. They're 22-2. Good decision that time by Jamal, Jamal Walker to back it out. Yeah, that's a pretty good record, 22-2, and two, when things are going right for him. Now they're in the half court. They want some movement. And pretty good shot. Hill, Xavier back on top by one. These guys finished third in their league. I mean, you mean it's two better teams? <laughs> I mean, Xavier, I'm impressed with Xavier. They're a pretty good team. These guys finished third in the Big Ten? Yeah, they finished right this year. Well, the Big Ten's a Big Ten. Big Ten's powerhouse. Midwestern, 82. The Midwestern Collegiate, you've got uh, actually a pretty good conference. Well, the foul will be on Michigan. As Walker again, took it right inside to them. Pete's going, Glenn Rice, don't make any more. Thumbs down to you, buddy. I don't want any more. Ralph Hacker, we said he was quiet. We said, we said Rice, well, he scored early. He hurt you. Xavier now is going right back down to what Michigan have done. They have made their last four shots from the field. 
chance to tie it up. Walker at the line. Well, they've been able to make their free throws. Of course, Ramil Robinson went to the line for Michigan and didn't convert the one and one. 20 free throws. They're going for the 21st free throw this afternoon for Xavier. They've hit 16 of them. Shot a lot more free throws than Michigan. Michigan, I think, is 8 to 11. They get a miss there. Oh, Walker. Rice. The game gets right down to it. You want Rice on your side. Here's Caleb. That's two. Big shot. Seven point. Oh, big shot by Caleb. Three-point lead. Evening, the biggest lead of the afternoon for the University of Michigan. Two minutes, 56 seconds to go. Michigan has now hit their last six shots. With timeout, Michigan leads at 86-83. Michigan's longest lead is on the boards right now, equally their previous longest lead. At three at 86-83, we have 2.56 to go, and we've had ourselves quite a ball game with a team from the Midwestern Collegiate Conference, the champions of the tournament, and they've been Evansville, making their fourth consecutive NCAA trip against Michigan of the Big Ten, a team that finished third. We've had 13 ties, 22 lead changes. A lot of fouls, though. Look at the foul trouble. Ralph, of course, Hill and Kimball with Bourne and Robinson Hills has brought with Bourne, but no one has fouled out. And Michigan has gone back to this 1-2-2 zone to avoid any fouls. This, I like the way Xavier's attacked it. They've got some pretty good shots. It's just that Glenn Rice has taken the game over at the other end of the floor. Oh, they need that. Couldn't get it down. Hill with a rebound. That was a big trip down the court, and they're not through with it yet. It was last touched by Hughes. They tried to go for the tie right off the bat. Well, I'm sure coming out of the timeout, Pete Gillen told his team, look, we need to score on this possession and go back press. They can't afford to let the Wolverines jump out to a five, six point lead. So they still get a fresh 45 and they've got to run their motion and execute well, not turn it over and they do right there. And a foul. Who do you get it on? Number 20. Yeah, on Davenport. Very, very poor inbound for it. Not a good sequence for Xavier that time. Normally a club, and Pete Gillen's got to be very upset, normally a team that could come out of timeouts, and they relish that opportunity to try to change the game and alter it by scoring. Steve Fisher, on the other hand, has to be happy with this event. Now he's hoping we can make some free throws at the end. Now they've gone to the free throw line 11 times today. You get eight of those for 73%. When Michigan and Xavier have met previously, only two times, Michigan has won the both. In 73, they won at 77-61, as I told you earlier, in the NIT in 1984, 63-62. Well, I think that's going to be off of Tyrone Hill, I thought. But no, they're going to give the ball. Another miss by Michigan. They're going to keep him in the game, and he didn't like the call. Steve Fisher thought... It was off of Hill instead. We're right down to the chest. Xavier Bond. Two minutes, 20 seconds to go in this game. 86-83. Michigan by three. Now, your better players have to touch the ball in this situation. Kimbrough's got to have it, or they got to look inside the Tyrone Hill. No bad shots, and no shots by people who are not used to doing it in the clutch. Here's some penetration. That's a difficult one. He gets it. Walker breaks it within one. 14 points for him. Just give me the ball, says Walker. Good at 55. Clock ticking. Mills. Good touch. Terry Mills, 20 points. All right, Terry Mills with his passing and his shots and Glenn Rice on the outside. Good defense that time by Ramiro Robinson to close on Kimball. Bill right. by shot by Hero. Now everything goes Michigan. Play. They're going to 29. Their game to lose, Xavier's game to win. Good decision that time by Robinson to back it out. They need to run some motion. They're into a minute 21. They need to utilize some of the clock. Not too quick. See, I like the fact you've got the two guards out there now, and nuts and bolts of the game. They should be able to make some good decisions, handle the ball, and run that clock down. It's down to 21 left on the 45, and you see the game clock. Oh, and Steve almost stole it from him. We're inside the last minute here in the Omni in Atlanta. 
The ball is out of bounds to Xavier. They trail by three. 88-85 behind Michigan. Michigan has taken the lead inside the last four minutes. Walker. Hembro. They have really grown cold from the field here late in the ball game. It is out of bounds. Michigan gets it back. Perhaps Xavier trying to get it back too quickly. Well, that time Walker tried to penetrate and give it up to Kimbrough, who's not been able to make that three-point shot. Steve Fisher has to be hoping that his club can get it in bounds. Caleb now has to control and stay in a half court. They need clock. They don't need points. Caleb letting Kimbrough sneak in the back door and almost stole the ball. It's out of bounds. Michigan gets it back. 36 seconds to go. That is Steve Fisher, acting head coach. And there is Pete Gillian, head coach for four years. It is rumored he may go to Michigan, but it'll be hard to replace Fisher. He should go ahead and take this team to the final four. Rice, Caleb, Walker fouls it. It'll be one of the bonus. I say, I, yeah, I think, you know, that's a situation. Of course, we've said this many times before, but no question they were trying to stop the clock. I think they've got to put some teeth in the rules and say at the end of the game, if they're intentionally trying to stop it in the eyes of the official, that's got to be two. You can't look at that as a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. No question, everybody's going foul, foul just to stop it. And Caleb. hope to get a miss if you're Xavier. Caleb is up the line. That's why he wanted the ball. Caleb is one of one today. It was eight point. He only averages two a game. Now, he got off to a shaky start when he first came in. Of course, Romeo Robinson and Falcho, Pete Gillen, trying to tell his club what to do whether it goes in or doesn't, but I think you give Caleb a lot of credit. He's got eight points today, and he has really taken some control of this game and made some big plays for Michigan. 90-85, biggest lead of the day for Michigan, and it goes out of bounds as Walker just couldn't throw a pass that Davenport could handle. When Michigan has scored 92 points a game, which is a new school record, they have really been on the tip. 24 and 7. Surprised Robinson tried to pass on him. Surprised Robinson was going for a lob to Rice. All he had to do was back it out. And let's hope Ramil Robinson isn't hurt because he went into the photographers under the basket. Well, he is. He's slow in getting up. Of course, that's Davenport, yes. I think. Davenport went in with him. Ramil is up and gone. There's the play by Robinson and Davenport. And of course, it was Davenport who went in. I thought we were blocked out. I thought Robinson went in. It was Davenport. That floor drops off over there. It actually slopes off. And he hit the last part of it and went on in. Uh, to the concrete area. Davenport is OK. He's back there. Outstanding effort by Xavier. Looks like they're going to come up a little short, Ralph. And I think you really got to credit the guard play of Michigan and the ability of Ramil Robinson not to pick up his fifth foul. And Demetrius Caleb came in the game and did a nice job, and I thought Mills made some good passes, and what can you say about Glenn Rice? Glenn Rice made some outside shots. Here comes Colin Parker into the game, number 30. He started and has played very little of this game, as Hill goes out. Caleb with a career high. His nine points today has been a career high. Five was his previous career high, and foul by Rafer just as soon as they get the ball into the game. Only 18 ticks of the clock left here in Atlanta. And the maiden game of Steve Fisher. Looks like it's going to end in a victory. Well, you got to like his position right now. And, of course, they got to bring Tyrone Hill back in the game. And Hill came back in and going to go in for offense, of course, do some shuffling. But Robinson's got a chance to put this one away for Keats. That's it. But Bill Robinson has played a great deal of time with four fouls on. It's 22 points for the game. Ramil's high of the year, 24. The last time he got it was against Indiana. Davenport, good to see him coming back in the game. And strong, going to go out. Good effort, really, by Xavier. But at the end of the game, in the last three minutes, I thought they had some opportunities and just couldn't get the ball down and couldn't get into a, a lead situation so they could dictate the tempo. Instead, they tried to play catch-up, and Michigan made their free throws and really did a good job. Walker, they just let him go in. Jamal Walker getting a 16th point. Just a matter of 10 ticks going off. Michigan will advance on. Robinson. Chasing him around. Good job. Rice. Robinson. The last shot of the game. It will not count. They say the horn is sounded. So the maiden victory by Coach Steve Fisher is now in the bag. As he and Pete Gillen shake hands. And Michigan, in their 13th NCAA appearance, has now won their 21st game against 12 losses. And Xavier, in their fifth NCAA game, has now gone at 1-6. And, and they get their record at 92-85.